So, Joan, mm -hmm. <laughs> what are we doing today? We're going to make le shakshuka. Le shakshuka. La shakshuk. Everyone says that their mom is the best cook. But when your mom is Joan Nathan, cooking can be a little bit different. You called me here to make this show with you. Yes. Why? What do you want me to know? Well, I want you to know what you want to know, but I also want you to know our traditions and what I've learned through the years. She'll teach me from her wealth of culinary expertise. Traditions that have gone on for thousands of years shouldn't, within this one generation of just looking at now, be done. And we'll do like we normally do. We'll talk. A lot. And we'll have some fun. A Hasidic rabbi once said, forget everything, all you need to know is the food. <laughs> That's a good thought. That's what I want to show you. I was in um, Williamsburg. Dad yeah. was with me. And um, I was really interested in seeing the house of a man named John de Sakira, who was the first person to bring tomatoes to the United States. And he was a Portuguese Jewish doctor. He was the doctor for Thomas Jefferson. Hmm. Tomatoes at that time were considered um, a nightshade family. It wasn't good to eat. I know grandma, when she came from Poland, would not eat tomatoes. Because they thought it would make you sick? Or? Poison, that you would die. It was evil, red, blood, whatever. Thomas Jefferson and John de Sequeira had this great idea that you would take a tomato and you go into the, the square of a town like Petersburg, Virginia, and you, he would take a bite of the tomato. And people would go, because oh, they thought he would die, and he didn't die. And so that he went, there's so many stories. I don't know if they're real or apocryphal. However, there are these stories all over Virginia of Thomas Jefferson going into the main square and eating a tomato and not dying. So I learned all about this yeah. in Williamsburg, and I saw his, where his house was. Yeah. And, um, and then afterwards, I heard that there was an Israeli chef at a winery. And I thought, oh, let's go for brunch at this winery. So we went over for brunch at the winery. And what did he have? Shakshuka. That's what the Israeli chef had. And it was the best shakshuka I ever yeah. had. Shakshuka, eggs and tennis sauce. Le shakshek means to shake to in shake Hebrew. To shake it, shake Every cook from North Africa has his or her own personal version of this egg and tomato dish. Whatever vegetable is used, it must be fresh, not canned. Right. In those days, f frozen was just coming in. Should we uh, call up Eris Komarovsky and see what he thinks about this? Absolutely. I bet you he doesn't use canned tomatoes. I'm sure he doesn't. Let's give him a call. <laughs> <laughs> Are you way up north on the border? Of course, I'm up north. It's, black. it's freezing up here. It's very nice. Erez, she, she's trying to teach me the best foods of the Jewish people. She told me that our cultures will die if she doesn't herself teach them to me. And so she's calling on you to help her in that mission. And I wonder if you can tell me a little bit about shakshuka. Is this even a Jewish dish? What the hell is shakshuka? Well, even me, a Polish guy, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, half Polish, half Ukrainian, uh, I'm doing uh, shakshuka every Saturday in the summer uh, with, with my tomatoes. And I'm doing it so hot and spicy that, uh, uh, um, and if it's not hot and spicy, it's not good. The guy that made it a very trendy year in Israel is Dr. Shakshuka. He became kind of the ambassador of Shakshuka all over the world. And it came with all the abundance of tomatoes when they started, they started planting tomatoes after the uh, Cortez came to the, brought them to the, new, to the old world, to the port of Naples. I, I think the most uh, uh, interesting thing that uh, we Israelis uh, doing it to to many dishes, adopting recipes, and 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 
changing them because we do not have any uh, clear heritage and we don't have this uh, heavy duty bag of memories and, and, and traditions that we have to follow like the Italians or the Japanese or uh, many others. So I think it, it, it became part of our uh, kind of uh, Israeli cuisine uh, and, and we uh, made it ours. We made it ours completely. And in that respect, it's a very Jewish dish. And what's the secret to making it perfect? Wow, the secret <laughs> is no onion, less garlic than uh, matbucha, very, very ripe uh, tomatoes. The secret is to mix few kinds of tomatoes. I personally do not peel the tomatoes and I do not recommend to peel the tomatoes because we Jews, we don't have time, you know, <laughs> to peel tomatoes. Cook it for a very long time, a very long time, uh, while um, mixing it with tons of olive oil. Tons of olive oil. I mean, I, I use for my shakshuka for uh, four people, I can use, I do not exaggerate, one and a half <laughs> cups of uh, olive oil. One and a half cups, wow. You need to use uh, room temperature eggs. And the best shakshuka is without the white egg, only the egg yolk. So, so you should definitely not use canned tomatoes. Canned tomatoes, I do not know what it is. Uh, <laughs> you use the tomatoes from your garden. Yes, and in the winter I do a spinach tomato, a spinach, I mean a shakshuka, or I do a chubeza shakshuka, or, or a, a, a beet, a beet leaves, or any kind of uh, leaves, mm -hmm. or a goat yogurt shakshuka which is the oh, white chukchuka that, uh, um, that is a very, very nice one, or very nice indeed. Well, thank you so much for, for, uh, for giving me these tips. Thank shalom. you. Guys. Shalom, shalom. 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 He's great. I love him. Okay. So, we've got our answer of how to make chukchuka. peppers and the okay. eggplant. Should I take them out of the oven? Absolutely. And there's no, by the way, it's as Ara said, no onion in, in shakshuka. What we're going to do is cut this open. Cut this off. Compost bin. Put it in the compost bin. Where it, oh, it's hot. Okay, because it's hot. Will not do what? And you see how this peels off? I usually put it in a paper towel for, until it cools down. And I, what I do normally with these, if I weren't making shakshuka with them, I would cut them up and put, make them in a, into a delicious salad that I, you can keep for weeks and weeks, which is... What are we doing? We're taking the peel? See? Yeah, take the, okay. yeah, it's too hot for me. You're hardier than I am. I'm, I'm the hardy. You're the hardy one. The story goes, that in North Africa, a lot of women, and that was called the Maghreb in those days, you know, like from the desert. Um, when women had an affair, not with their husband, of course, and they didn't have enough time to cook, they would make something that they'd have to just quickly uh, shake up, which was shakshuka. And so... Who, where does this story come from? Uh, this is just an old you know, wives' tale. Maybe an old wives' tale. But anyway, that's the story that I heard. And so shakshuka is because you're shaken up because you've been cheating on your husband. Right, and you. <laughs> so how could you feed me this food? Is there something you need to tell me? Well, this is something that you could just mix up all together. You didn't have to make couscous. You didn't have to do all kinds of other things. You could just quickly shake it up, make it up. People want to know who started it. Um, it, I think it was all over North Africa. It was a breakfast dish. It was with um, bumper crops of, of tomatoes. It was a summertime dish. It was a pasta dish. It was, um, but mostly with eggs and either um, sausage and other things. It's all going to go in the same pan, right? Absolutely, we yes. Can you put oil on the top first? A little bit, yeah. You want to go and do that while sure. I cook this right Sure. I love helping being your assistant. Tables. We're shaking things up. On this. We're shaking things up. 
So we're going to shake it up. Right, right. right. Shuk, the shuk, the shuk You know, when I lived in Israel, there were these women from Tripoli yeah. that made their own couscous, and I, as far as I know, they still do it in um, in Jaffa, old Jaffa. Yeah. And they sit down and they they make couscous from semolina. And they, so they really popularized it. It was a cheap food. Lots of young people like to eat it. And then what happened, and so that, it, you know, it's slightly filtered out of Israel. If everybody wanted to go to Dr. Shakshuka. That was in um, Old Jaffa. Okay. And so... Right next to Tel Aviv. Yeah, what I think happened was um, Yotamatolengi, who put Shakshuka in his book, but he said it was Tunisian, but he was, it wasn't Tunisian. It was really Libyans that had the, the restaurant, and everybody would go to it. If you wanted shakshuka, you'd go to Dr. Shakshuka. Yeah. And, um, and I think that's what really popularized it. This guy, Dr. Shakshuka, did you ever well, meet him? Yeah, of course I did. How was the And I interviewed him. It was, it was great shakshuka. It was all kind, there was all kinds of shakshuka. Tell me about your Sips and Suppers event Well, and Shakshuka for that. Starting in 2009 for the Obama inauguration, yeah. Alice Waters and Jose Andres and I, we've been putting on these fundraising dinners for Sips and Suppers, which is for Martha's Table. Which is? It's an organization to help the homeless are almost homeless. They don't eat, who can't eat otherwise. Right, and they can't eat otherwise. And especially now, it's, it's even more crucial than it ever has been. So we do a, a series of fundraising dinners where people eat at people's homes, and they pay uh, top, dollar. top dollar to have a dinner from a chef. And all the ingredients so you bring are done at from around, the, I mean, the first world. First of you had Danielle Boulou. Danielle. Who, who other chefs have you had do these dinners? Tom Colicchio. Who saved um, your life. Who saved my life the yeah. first year. When you choked. Uh, uh, right, on a chicken bone. For not just a chicken bone. This was Najmi Manlij's Fessenjun, right. which is the greatest I dish love that one dish could ever imagine. So if you're going to choke on a dish, <laughs> I'd say Fessenjun is the one to do. Right. <laughs> anyway. anyway. So Tom saved your life. So then, okay. So every is you year, do this fundraiser and chefs and, from around the and country. And because the chefs come in, and we're really so grateful for their coming in, um, I do a, a fundraising brunch on Sunday before the dinner, and um, and every year I make shakshuka. And when I first started so all, doing it, nobody knew what it was, 2009. And this is for all of the chefs, right? Just this for the chefs. and thank the chefs for coming right. to work. Right, so there are about, a, uh, I'd say, about 100 people come to my house. So that's a lot of shakshuka. That's a lot of shakshuka. So, so I make it in it. advance, and, um, and I freeze it. But you don't make batch. the eggs, right? You're just no, 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 no. I do. And, then, and then what I do is I put it into a smaller container, like that one there, a uh, uh, frying you? pan, like this one. Sure. It looks pretty and it's shallow, so I put some of the mixture that I cook ordinarily, and then I cook down the eggs in it, and then I let people put what they want on top, either parsley or um, if they want to put sausage on top or if they want to put feta cheese, cheese on Obviously top. Obviously, you don't mix. And I have a volunteer of like a, a, a kid in the and now she's about to go to college, but. She's been volunteering since she was maybe in sixth grade. She makes all the um, shakshuka. shakshuka. It's a lot of work cutting these tomatoes up. Yeah, well, <laughs> we have a lot of volunteers for this project, and we've made but, so millions you, of dollars for these organizations, for, for, for Martha's Table. And it was before that, it was what, for um, DC Central Kitchen, but now it's just Martha's Table. So you, you raised all this money. Uh, You've brought chefs together. Right. You've brought people together. You've right. gotten them to eat shakshuka. <laughs> uh, well, they also eat lots of all, a lot of my other Jewish food. Yeah. I make uh, schnecken. Well, what about I Jose? Make... Does Jose? Uh, the, the, I heard he wants to open a Sephardic Jewish restaurant with you. With that, me, is he does. We, he's been talking about this for years. He's 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 got more important well, things to do. Would this be there? I mean, this would you consider this a Sephardic? Yeah, Jewish this would definitely for our Ashkenazi? for our right. First, we've cooked down all our vegetables. And I'm going to put a little little bit of sugar because tomatoes always need a little sugar. 
So garlic, Unless, sugar, parsley. I mean, you could put dill on this. You could do whatever you want. Whatever you want. You could put smoked, um, this is smoked salt, or you can use smoked paprika. Just smell this, it's really good. And I don't know where she got it from. One of, a chef gave it to me. Mm. Smells like a fireplace. Mm -hmm. We should put a little bit in here. So now this is cooked down for around 30 minutes. Right. So it's got the parsley in, the red peppers. Boy, I love red peppers. I don't know about you. And of course, red peppers came from the New World and they went to the Danube Valley. And um, a, actually, a lot of Jewish spice merchants um, brought them around to farmers. And while they were bringing corn and all the other New World ingredients, it looks really pretty. And then, and then what we're going to do, let me get it. You want the stove still on, right? Yep. Okay. So, there's lots of garlic in there. And then you just sort of press it down. Okay, so now you're going to just crack them right in? Yeah, you've got to be careful, though. Okay. And then you cook it till they're cooked. I like to break mm -hmm. the eggs a little bit. No, don't do it. And then I liked this to put a little Wait, bit of this. Now? Yeah, because then it'll melt a little bit, just a little. Cover it for a few minutes. When I make it yeah. and I transfer it to that, when I'm making it for four people, I just bring it right onto the table and serve it with pizza or whatever bread I have. Sometimes I make, um, make it with kosher sourced sausage, mm -hmm. or I make it with Beyond Meat because so many people, but for this uh, particular fundraiser, there was a, a lamb farmer mm. who would bring his chorizo sausage. Oh, Jameson Farms. Right, and he would bring that every year and everybody just loved the chorizo. And so how long are we gonna be cooking this for? Uh, till it's done. You, you know, it's using up the plenty of summer. Would you ever put preserved lemons in a shakshuka? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Why? Just, I don't think it's a breakfast food, preserved preserve lemon. Yeah. I just like, you know, it's sort of, you want it to open. Yeah, open your day up right. And that's why you have garlic. Garlic is something, it, it, you know, it, it opens your senses. Salt closes your senses. Uh, so, you know, I, and I like smoky paprika. That maybe would open your senses. Mm. And now I'm going to use smoky salt. So it's like a, it's a beginning of the week kind of open your senses to the week kind of dish. Right, exactly. Woo! See, and then, then you, here, let me doctor it up for you, okay? That looks beautiful. Oh, this looks delicious. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Oh, beautiful. Here, give me your plate. Mm. Isn't it good? You know, Eris is right. You don't have to peel the tomatoes. You want that fiber. Well, another meal cooked. <laughs> another recipe learned. Another recipe learned. That will continue, I hope. The Teavon. The Teavon. Yum, yum, yum.